Misha is here with another delicious dish. I mean, my goodness me, it really is. Um, I'm already halfway through. <laughs> it's so good. What, what, what am I eating here? You are eating essentially a pumpkin curry. This is butternut squash and prawns. Now, the reason pumpkins are such a big deal in India, they are one of our favourite vegetables, is because they grow on rubbish heaps mm. right the way through the country for a lot of the year. Really? So pumpkin is a more beloved ingredient than meat, believe it or not. Oh. This, without the prawns, would be a completely vegan, low-fat, gluten-free curry, ready in 20 minutes. Amazing. So what I have done, in lieu of pumpkins, because it's not in season, we have got butternut squash, mm -hmm. and all I've done is I have had those steamed. So boil them, microwave, bit of water, whatever, get them to the point where they are soft. So Mesh. they're done, all done. And, right, <laughs> really exciting, a couple of new spices here. So what I'm doing, a little bit of oil in a pan, mm. and I am frying fenugreek seeds. Comes in many forms, does fenugreek. Leaf goes in, curry, in meat curries. Powder is good for marinades. But seeds are what you use with vegetables. And what they're good at doing is awakening the most lacklustre of vegetables. So potatoes, your squashes, your pumpkins, all of that kind of thing, your kohlrabi, celeriac, fenugreek seeds. And you fry them to the point of kind of chestnut brown. OK. Once they go any darker than that, they get bitter. Mm. So be careful. Now, as soon as they are fried, which they are, I'm going to add my second kind of really potent spice. These two spices together are our biggest sort of weapon in the Indian kitchen to awaken the most meagre ingredients. So fenugreek seed and asafoetida. Never heard of that. Asafoetida. It's got the word fetid in it. Asafoetida. And the reason it says that, <laughs> the reason it's named that is because it is fetid in its smell. It smells like rotten eggs. But what? when you, it's crazy. How is that? Can, can I just say so amazing? I, I just want to swing this pan by you. Can you smell that? Can you smell? We're allowed that? to come over now. Are you allowed to do that? Can you smell something? Kind of. I can. I've got food in my mouth, which probably isn't anything. Oh yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of... It doesn't yes, smell can. fetid, though. It doesn't smell... Do you know what it smells of? I'm hoping you'll agree with me. It smells of onions and garlic mm. frying. Which is a quite mm. a nice smell. It's a nice smell. Mm. Once you submerge it in hot oil, it creates this wonderful aroma. Yeah, yeah. So here's the thing. In the Hindu kitchen... So my father was a Hindu priest. In the Hindu kitchen, you are not allowed, technically, to have garlic and onions. And when you became a widow, so my great-grandmother, my grandmother, once they become widows, they are no longer allowed to eat meat, no longer allowed to eat garlic and onion. Their life is sort of over. They have the head shaved, they wear white, no, there's no perfume, there's no remarriage. Yeah, incredible. It's a little unfair. It's not great, is it? <laughs> Changing so dramatic. So you have to just get after clever. You've, just after you've suffered one of the greatest losses of your life. Yeah. Wow. That's right. So it is changing, but it was my mother that went over and sort of got my, you know, shoehorned my grandmother back into coloured saris, got her to eat a little bit of fish, etc. You know, but that is the case. But what happens is these women became trail subversive trailblazers in the kitchen yeah. and they found a resin, a sapatita, that if you ground it and fried it, it emulates perfectly Onions. the smell of garlic. So, like, That's a very incredible. clever loophole. Yes, it's two <laughs> fingers up to the patriarchy. A little bit. It really is. But it's a very clever loophole. But do you know what's so great about that is it makes cooking simple, it makes it delicious, and it truly is alchemy. You know, these little powders that I'm kind of introducing you to, what they do to humble ingredients gets me so excited. It's why I gave up I am ordering life, that honestly. straight so away. Exciting. So, really simple. Now that we fry the asafoetida, in goes the ready-done butternut squash. I'm going to throw a few prawns in because it gives you a lovely, you know, you get that extra umami. You do not need them. This could be and should be, in a way, completely vegan. Now, so you just toss those together and then we go in with our sort of foundational spices. So remember, we have turmeric. Goes in to everything. Mm. So if I sound like I'm repeating myself, I think this is why I can't do this too often. <laughs> But it's true, and I think the more people understand that all Indian food starts with turmeric and a little bit of chilli, just for background warmth, you know, the, the more easy it becomes, the simpler it is. Yeah. There are just those ropes that you swing to. Mm -hmm. Turmeric, chilli. And into this, I'm going to add a little bit of ginger. Now, do you remember I was telling you about these sort of heat-giving hedonistic ingredients like onion and garlic? They're pungent, they taint the mouth, they're forbidden. 
ginger is one of the most cleansing, and I think this is sort of across the whole of Eastern culture, yeah. one of the most cleansing ingredients. And is that fresh ginger you're putting fresh in Fresh ginger. Right. If you can be bothered. So a good tablespoon of fresh ginger, because fresh ginger with vegetables just brings those flavours out a bit more. It's that sharpness, it's that little bit of acidity. Yeah. So in goes the ginger. And, of course, that is optional. You could have just stuck to the asafoetida and the, uh, and the yeah. uh, fenugreek seeds. Right. Now I'm going to season this with a little bit of salt and a little bit of sugar, brown sugar. That's optional. But I like, with butternut squash, just to bring a little bit more of that sweetness out. So it's entirely optional, but I think it's very, very sort of... Gujaratis, particularly certain areas of India, would always add a bit of sugar to their curries. Right. And then into the mm. end of this... We... I didn't want that to end. Did you not? No. I love that. There's more here. It's not often you eat the whole thing. <laughs> I know. You really like it. Honey, it's incredible. I'm you... really into it. Do you know what? Like, I'm really into it. I'm not really exactly sure you have ever beat me to the bottom like of the a, plate. made, like, a clear soup thing once, and I make it all the time. It's, like, a favourite, and I think this might be my next, like, thing that I just keep eating. It's so delicious. It's, um, what's so incredible about that is the fact that it is meat-free. Mm. And for the sake of the planet and for the sake of our guts, if we can do a meat-free day or even a meat-free meal mm. every so often, mm. um, it's quite great. How come, just in our last 40 seconds, yeah. how come I've got a toasty here? Well, this is the great <laughs> thing about this. Those spices that are in are pickling spices. So can I tell you, this curry is better the next day. It's better when it's cold and it's fantastic in a toasted sandwich. So it really <laughs> is. Yeah, isn't it? So good. And here's the other really big tip. With, with Indian food, with vegetable curries, you have them with breads. You don't have them with rice. With meat curries, you have them with rice. So there's this whole etiquette that goes across the cuisine and that's why I'm actually lyrical about it. But in a toasted sandwich, it's to die for. It's unbelievable. It's so delicious. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. A new staple for me. So Thank you I'm very so much. Good. Well, for details of today's recipe and more delicious ideas from our chefs, download the free This Morning app.